All right. I think it's time for us to start. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to my first panel I've ever hosted. This is a uh, panel called Itasha, your favorite uh, automotive expressions of your favorite waifu. Um, it's going to be a little bit of everything. We're going to talk a little bit about the history of it, kind of a very quick overview of where we come, the process of what uh, a lot of people go through for making a Natasha, and a couple of examples to kind of give you a little guidance. Um, Natasha, I know in my experience of it uh, over four or five years or so now, is often something that I find interesting, admire in some si sort of way, or find some sort of fascination with, um, but curiously, don't find a straight answer when it comes to how do I make my dream a reality? And I'm hoping that this panel here can make uh, you have a little bit more information to begin the journey for um, creating your own Atasha. Um, I know that it's something that is often, um, at least for myself, I was scared about to create um, for my own self. Um, it's kind of a journey of what you want to put out to the world and show, you know, unrestricted of um, opinion, uh, something you're passionate about. And I'm hoping that this will be helpful for you in that too. Um, so uh, without further ado, let's get started. Um, so what is an Atasha? And full disclosure, if you have a question, like put your, throw your hand up, scream. We're going to do this super loosey goosey. It's going to be, um, you know, totally open-ended, super casual. The only thing that I am worried about is, I don't know if that camera over there is streaming or not, but I don't see a person behind it. But it is an all audiences thing, so I'm going to try my best to not say any bad words, because I definitely got my fill already this weekend. <laughs> so, let's get it going. What exactly is an Atasha? So, Atasha kind of trans, uh, translate directly from the word um, itai, which means painful or something to make you cringe or, or feel pain in some sort of emotional or physical kind of way, and the word sha meaning car. Um, the, um, car the, the thing about this word that makes it a little um, kind of entertaining in its own facet is it was also derived from a uh, previous word called um, itasha, which referred to an Italian car, which was a car of status that would, people would bring in. Um, and often with a lot of early Atasha, people would actually take these nice Italian or rare European or even American muscle cars and decorate it in a way that society, specifically Japan, saw as something that was um, contrarian or taboo. Um, what we kind of see as the word Atasha today is something more of a car that is decorated in something that someone may be um, passionate about. It doesn't necessarily have to be anime. It can be a couple of other different things. Um, and in the modern context, people, you'll often see that these cars are wrapped uh, rather than painted, but that's more of a trend, not a rule. Um, modern uh, Atashas can be seen on a variety of different cars, which we'll, we'll go a little into. Um, so here's a couple of examples. Actually, uh, the vast majority of these are actually in the DMV area. So you'll see a couple of these um, as well as a couple that are located in Pittsburgh. So keep an eye out for them. Um, I can't remember all the Instagram handles off the top of my head, so I will apologize. Senpai but, party. huh? Senpai. Senpai Party, yes. Senpai Party is the group out of Pittsburgh. Great eye. Um, and a couple of those are in this picture. Uh, the Nezuko one um, is one of them, as well as this um, Juvia one from Fairy Tale. Um, they're all wonderful people. Um, who um, just kind of found their own way to express themselves. Um, so the thing that's very interesting about this whole movement is that it's also moved away, not necessarily away, but it's expanded to not only include cars, cars of Italian descent, but also um, other medians such as motorcycles, um, bicycles, and in this case of uh, a guy no known as Cyano Cry in Los Angeles, not one but two aircraft. <laughs> This first one, the second one, you can find as well. <laughs> so, um, again, what exactly is and what exactly isn't an Natasha? And 
Um, I could tell you that it's this or that, but the thing that's very um, nice, or I, at least I think pretty interesting about the modern interpretation of Atasha is that um, Atasha doesn't have an explicit definition, is really kind of a um, moderation of someone's own personal interpretation. Um, some people um, define Atasha by effort put in, some people define Atasha by the amount of the vehicle that's covered, um, but really there isn't an explicit way that you would describe it. Um, there's no set car makes, people have done um, anything from American cars to, to European cars to Japanese cars, um, they've done everything from a Honda Civic to I've seen a McLaren 720 wrapped with Arknights. Um, and again, it's not even uh, exclusive to just cars. Um, like I said um, previously, things like Etanshas, which are motorcycles, which are derived from similar wording, um, also are included, uh, uh, such as bikes, planes, and there have been instances of people even decorating their firearms, though some people feel wishy-washy in that one and feel like there's a, a personal line that gets drawn there as well. Um, how, that being said, there are other Japanese vehicles that are not part of the Itasha movement. Um, the ones that I think of in particular are the uh, Bosuzoku cars, so if you've ever heard of those, those are the absolutely wild ones. Uh, slammed, uh, you see the tailpipes that are in the shape of hearts. Just think of that crazy scene from Cars 1. It'll take you back in time a little bit. I swear that one scene bred an entire movement of vehicles. <laughs> so, um, in terms of history, um, people think that the modern Natasha um, uh, movement started basically in the 2005 era. Um, the, from my searches, the first recorded one was in uh, Kamiket, I think it was 68 in 2005, so quite a bit ago, um, but still uh, modern. Um, just kind of crazy that in two years that car would be able to drink legally in this country. <laughs> um, the um, thing that's quite um, fascinating about this is uh, Japan actually adopted this movement quite readily. Um, we've see, um, this ad seen on the top here is a, a real life ad for a scale model die cast car wrapped with the intellectual property for Toho. <laughs> um, but if you told me that this came out in 1970, I'd believe it because they really hit the market, uh, the marketing on this one pretty good. Um, the thing about, um, Japan and the thing that kind of stemmed this movement in the first place was that the society with an overgeneralization here is quite um, rigid in its in its ideology of self-expression and individualism. There's a huge sense of community and working as a whole, which is um, a societal choice, um, but um, often um, stifles uh, or or um, decentivizes. Um, some sort of personal self-expression. Yes? If, hey, man, if that makes you happy, do it. Thank you for dropping in. Guys, give them a round. Um, so, yeah, there's been um, recorded um, experiences all the way back to 2005, um, and the idea was a, 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 almost a rebellious movement uh, and an expression of uh, individualism in a society that disincentivizes it. Um, it started becoming more popular about 10 years later internationally, um, specifically in the U.S. first, West Coast, um, followed by uh, the central part of the country uh, seeing a, a big movement of it in Texas. Um, and now we've seen further movement in other countries such as the Philippines uh, and multiple countries in Europe. Finland, Germany uh, in particular has a pretty big scene as well as a couple of others. Um, often these designs are uh, tempered uh, from a country by country basis. Um, it, it's quite interesting in Japan uh, with their idea of significant rebelling, uh, like the societal norm, uh, you'll see a lot of vehicles that uh, would even be considered taboo in this country. So you'd see characters that the term lolly would come to mind um, that's just not seen in the Atasha scene in the United States, for example, because there's just a, a different tempering for uh, what would be 
culturally appropriate to put on your vehicle. And that's, again, uh, both a mesh of societal incentive and personal individual, uh, for lack of better uh, phrasing, risk tolerance. Okay. So let's, let's, let's move away a little bit from the history here. Um, does anyone have any quick questions before we move on to like what it takes to maybe get a little idea of where you want to start your journey on this? I'm tired after the concert too. I don't blame you guys. <laughs> All right. So we want, to put, we want to put anime on our car. Cool. So some people are like, oh, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, don't, I don't have a cool car. I have a 2005 Civic. Well, first off, that is a cool car. <laughs> tell me another car that you, so, someone tells you 400,000 miles and they're like, excuse me, awesome, big fan. There's no such thing as a car that isn't cool enough for a Tasha. Um, there's, uh, like I said earlier, just a wide swath and um, really the, uh, the limiting factor is your own uh, creativity and your interest in doing it in the first place. Um, so there's a couple of different vectors for doing this. Um, a lot of people um, find interest in doing something that's completely ground up their own personal expression. Um, in terms of that, you have something that's completely custom, one-off, unique. And then there's also other options um, that are available, readily made and designed. And you're like, I like X character and I want this idea. And you can go on eBay or AliExpress and find something that fits your needs. Um, that being said, um, if you were to make your own custom, um, how would you do that? Um, and there's, there's four major, what I would like to call pillars on doing that. Um, there's uh, the acquisition of art, um, whether that be through different means we'll talk about in a minute here. There's things such as um, the, the practice of arranging and designing supporting assets to go fit this art that you created onto the canvas that is your car. That special um, kind of design work we usually put in the hands of what we call a designer. Um, followed by the actual house that will print the wrap itself on a material that's readily appliable for your car. And finally, the installation process or the installer. Um, often those two last ones are uh, lumped together, but that's um, something that a lot of people seek out because usually the places that have the capability for printing uh, will also have the capability for installation. So. Well, yeah. Well, thanks for interrupting my panel, but yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you get some weird names for some people, right? So, uh, why tell someone? You mean funny names or something? Okay, that awfully sounds like you're, 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 it sounds like you're ready to start a bit, but. All right. Well, you want my na their names? Okay, well, the artist that I used was who? Who? Yes, who? That's their name. It's who. <laughs> who was my artist? Then it was done. Um, I got this done a little bit ago. Uh, I got it at this place called Tomorrow. I will tell you about it tomorrow. Well, that's where it was done. Tomorrow in Los Angeles. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Jeremy. He also owns a wrapped car. He will be helping me a little bit here. Uh, we tried to talk, do it, but uh, we're not comedians. We're just tired. <laughs> so, uh, it was supposed to be mapped out, but essentially the long and short of it is everyone's journey is, in fact, very different. Um, they're the average time that a lot of people have when it comes to designing, um, Atasha's with a fairly swift turnaround can be anywhere from six to 12 months, um, to get a, a quality custom ground up product that they can probably call their own. Myself personally, um, took me about three years. Um, that was due to a lot of snafus. I've had to work with two different artists at just sometimes the artists you work with have cues that are so long that, um, you know, when you are trying to get something that's so detail uh, required and so um, personally involved uh, might just be overwhelming for an artist who's never done so this before. Um, same thing goes with design work. Um, someone who's never done a, uh, something like um, 
designing assets around, you know, body lines of a vehicle can be a surprisingly challenging task. Um, so for me personally, uh, start to end took about three years. Uh, Jeremy w here was able to do it a lot shorter. Yeah. He was about one month away from doing his second rap before I did my first. Yeah, I, I almost had my second version done before. It was like two weeks after he got his and I got mine reapplied. So. <laughs> but um, that all aside, um, when it comes to our work, there's a lot of draft work that's involved. Um, these are a couple of examples of the draft work that were done for my own personal vehicle um, between the two different artists that I've used, the two different designers I used. Um, and it's, it's a lot of revision, a lot of time, not only uh, that you put in the hands of someone else, but the time that you'll involve in yourself as well. Um, but they often say that the things that um, mean the most to you never come easy. And I really, you know, I've had it since May, so not too, too long, but um, man, the, the butterfly effect's still, still kind of there when I see it across the grocery store, followed by the strange looks I get by the people cr passing my car at the grocery store, so. <laughs> I work on a military base, and sometimes the, ba the base commander rolls by and just rolls his eyes. <laughs> Um, these are a couple of pictures of actually how mine came out. Um, I did mine um, also a little differently. Um, you, there's different material finishes you can use, and for me personally, I used a uh, retro reflective finish. So when you hit it with light, similar to you know uh, emergency vehicles, um, any color that isn't black will actually get reflected back pretty aggressively. So um, I designed those elements around there. Um, if you have your car parked in the Gaylord parking deck, you'll find mine probably on the third floor. Uh, if they towed it, that would be very sad. <laughs> so, um, yes, please. So, um, it's a retro, yeah, so it's a retro reflective. So it's a, a material that will reflect light back when you hit it with light. Um, there's a couple of different manufacturers. The big ones are uh, Orcal, 3M, and Avery. There's a couple of other smaller players, but those are the ones that are the big ones. And each one have their own little niche. Uh, Orcal is often seen as the most affordable option. Avery kind of strikes the value and um, is preferred by a lot of installers due to the ease of use for working it with it. But 3M, 3M has been the company that's been around the longest. And if you want something esoteric uh, or... or um, material, um, ambitious, they provide you something that the other companies can't. Please. Oh, did you have anything like a, a narrative in mind, like a life event or something that happened that you were looking at this random article and you were just like, I think this just looks good and speaks to me? Yeah, so that's a great question, and um, the, the, the answer is, for me personally, I just, I've been engrossed in the Toho community for a long time now. Um, it's my favorite character, and it, the, this um, character and design has a lot of motifs that, um, for those who in the Toho community, would find very interesting. Uh, I would talk your ear off about it, but I'm scared that I wouldn't get through the slides in time. So, <laughs> so if you want to find me, and you are up for the challenge of listening to me rant even longer... I'm there for you, buddy. <laughs> so let's talk about uh, art acquisition here. Um, why, don't you, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? So <laughs> let me just bring up the slides on my phone. <laughs> here you go. <laughs> uh, oh, while, while he works on that. So there's, there's a lot of different ways you can acquire art. Um, and there's some ways that are pretty... Um, um, I guess I would call um, unethical. Well, not unethical, but there are certain ways that you can do it that um, will make it least likely that you can get, for lack of a better phrase, in trouble. Um, a lot of um, there's instances where you can get in trouble with the intellectual property holder. Uh, if you take art without permission, you can get in trouble with the artist and um, other situations. So. so in the order of most expensive to least expensive, roughly, First, you can, uh, the best idea is to commission an artist. You can get exactly what you want for uh, like whatever, 
whatever poses you want, uh, whatever you actually want, uh, whatever characters. You don't have to worry about like, oh, is this going to fit with the body lines of my car? Or is this going to, uh, like, is someone going to say, oh, well, that's my art, you can't use it. Um, but obviously, if you're commissioning specific art, you have to talk to the artist to make sure that they're willing to give you something that's high enough resolution that you can actually use it. Uh, you actually have to pay them for any art that goes on the car, which is like, uh, can be a lot if you're not just doing like one character that you're mirroring on the other side of the vehicle. Okay, like for example, my car has eight individual pieces of art on it and that ran me like four or $500 all said and done. Um, but that's what happens whenever you decide you want to commission it. Uh, if you find something pre-existing, you're like, oh, this is perfect. I want this exact art for my car. You can go to the artist and try and ask and say, hey, uh, can I like use your art on my car? Um, sometimes they'll say yes. Sometimes they'll say no. Sometimes they'll say, hey, you can, well, yeah, if you pay me. <laughs> so it, it really depends on the artist and if you can communicate with them. Uh, going down from that. If you're artistic, you can draw it yourself. Uh, that I, honestly, I would consider that the ultimate flex of my anime art is on my car. Uh, I can't draw, so that's not an option for me. But um, and the next three are all the reason they're in red is because they're all maybe slightly legally troubling, depending on who you're, uh, what where the art is. Um, oh, oh gosh. Uh, that was that was a that was a poor choice, but we'll uh, we'll we'll speak it out to you. Um, I would have to stop the presentation here. So I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Well, the first one is redrawing official art. So let's say your your art is like from a game. Let's say uh, Guilty Gear or something, and you want like a frame of that, and you just take your character. Uh, you could get that redrawn as a vector, uh, which is just makes it so it's easier to make it larger. Because um, usually if it's something that's on a screen, it's going to be too small to be very pixely when you blow it up. Uh, but obviously if you're using trace assets from something, the company might say, well, that's our art, and they might not appreciate it. Uh, the next one down is stealing. You just find some art online and you slap it on your car and you don't care if that you're stealing someone's intellectual property, which is kind of a scummy move and th they're well within their rights to say, uh, uh, this is scummy, and then you don't really have a recourse, but that's, uh, that's a... They will win the court battle. <laughs> and the very last uh, of the ethically dubious is the eBay special, which is you're just grabbing it off of eBay and you don't know who designed it. If it was designed for someone and someone copied it, there are people who will actually copy other Atasha, which is... Um, it's always been weird to me that people it's, do that. It's not there. okay. <laughs> um, the thing about when it comes to eBay and AliExpress, and the reason why I personally try to decentivize it, is um, a lot of these um, shops are based out of countries that don't enforce intellectual property management. Um, so a lot of uh, what I tell people is you don't have to have the world's most complex or expensive design uh, process or make. Um, however, if you are interested in making your own, um, try to limit your asset and picture exposure online when it comes to raw files. So if you're posting in work in progress pictures, limit the resolution when you put it out. Ruin its resolution. Takes little snippets. Um, because a lot of these shops will look online for buzzwords, hashtag Itasha, hashtag anime car, find images that are workable throw it in and now they have a design that they're going to sell online and it's a big problem. So that aside, um, when it comes to resolution of these um, eBay and AliExpress ones, they can be dubious at best and we highly recommend that if you were to make one on your own, uh, look for ideally a 300 plus DPI uh, resolution, but uh, anything over 200 DPI should still be fine. Thank you. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll quickly breeze through this because we're falling behind and that is my fault. So um, in terms of arrangement, like I mentioned earlier, the way to do it, and this is actually, if this car looks familiar, that's because this is the car that's actually in the front of the convention center. Um, this is, uh, the person who did this did almost all the work on their own. Uh, they did the vector work themselves. 
Uh, they did the design process themselves. They uh, had only the material printed uh, somewhere else, but they even applied it themselves. Um, but when it comes to arrangement on a vehicle, uh, how it works is um, often e uh, you either, again, do it yourself or you hire a designer. Um, for people who are, who, I, I usually tell people, if you know that you're going to do it yourself, you probably can. But if you are asking yourself if you can do it, it's probably in the sake of time better to put it in the hands of someone who does it as a job. Um, it, it depends on how you value your time and how much uh, time you're willing to say, I did this myself. But um, I've used Photoshop and uh, Lightroom and Illustrator for over 10 years. I send it to someone else who knows better than I do because I don't do it for a job. They do it professionally. They know how to send it to prep shops who uh, are looking for certain specific parameters to do it right. Um, like I said earlier, again, material choices. We have reflective, uh, mass, matte, and gloss are the three in reverse order of uh, popularity. Uh, reflective being the least popular and gloss being the most popular. Um, usually, uh, the reflective and matte options and less common options tend to be more expensive. Um, and then in terms of layering, some people will actually stack um, their assets um, as separate layers. So they'll be like, I want to wrap the entire car orange. So if you see what they have right here, this print, that, that uh, bar at the top, is this the actual sheet that gets printed? Uh, some people, but when we're talking about layering, we're talking about uh, you would print several sheets of different colors and so you could actually adjust where these were are relative to each other so it's not the final design on your computer and you can adjust it once you actually have it printed and on the car in case of curves and stuff like that you know, mess up the positioning and then again as i said earlier uh in terms of coverage of the vehicle totally up to you um this vehicle actually the one in the front only has the sides done. It's quite common. Some a lot of people just don't want to change the the clean look that a lot of vehicles have on the front um, nose, and that's totally fine. Some people feel the complete other way. They love the way the side looks clean and will only wrap the hood. Um, some people even only do front quarter wraps as well. It's really up to you on what you want to do, uh, and consequently, the more area that's covered can be more expensive, and the less area covered can be more financially attainable uh, immediately. So um, in terms of getting it printed, um, the uh, materials that's often used for long-lasting uh, Atasha vehicles are done on l large format printers. Um, these large format printers are done in uh, wrap shops that are uh, usually just uh, what you would call commercial wrap shops. There are a couple of Atasha branded wrap shops in the country, um, but the um, con the convenience of having an Atasha oriented shop um, is often locationally inaccessible to people. Um, I know, for example, for us here in the DMV area, the closest strictly all-in-house shop is probably located in either Georgia or Texas. Um, but uh, you don't need a specialized shop. Any commercialized wrap shop can do it. Um, if you think that you want to do it yourself, um, unfortunately, just if... Uh, due to the type of ink that's used as well as the accuracy needed for these large format prints, it is, um, for lack of better phrasing, financially inadvisable. Um, the, the, these printers are $30,000 on average, and each ink cartridge costs between $500 to $2,000. The printer I found for this is $12,000, and it's an entry level. <laughs> <laughs> these, um, and these printers are... Uh, they, they're like food. If they're not being consumed, they go bad. Um, so if you're not churning out a lot of output, um, it just it doesn't um, make a lot of sense. So installing. Now, some people are good with stickers. Like you, you put a sticker on like your Lego. You buy a Lego set, you get this little sheet of stickers, and you put it on your bricks, and it's like, oh, it's nice and easy. Now, imagine those stickers cost $1,000 each, and you're now putting it on your car. So there's a good reason that sometimes you want to have someone who's been doing it for 20 years. Um, but sometimes if you have a nice skilled hand like our friend who, with the Type R that you saw earlier, uh, he did it all himself. Uh, He's he, personally, I've got shaky hands. No, uh, no, no. So um, the vehicle that he's done outside looks really, really good, but he's done about probably 10 or so now. And... Um, the first few of them were not what I would call uh, 
commercially presentable products. And, and that's just something that uh, kind of comes with the territory from my exposure. Um, a lot of these kinds of um, um, applications are heavily prone to environmental factors such as temperature, but also uh, other factors such as the, um, you know, the way that particular roll was printed that day, um, as well as the way that the um, adhesive on the back of that vinyl was, d you know, done at the factory. And also, how clean your car is when you have it wrapped? Like, if you don't have like a garage and or uh, and like you're, it's right now there's salt on all the roads. If you unless you're doing it at the car wash, like you're you're going to have road debris on there, so you have to make sure your car is as clean as possible because anything that's on your car is now going to be stuck to the back of your sticker that you have on the side of your car. Uh, if you have interest in doing these vehicles and you see yourself doing it more than once, there is a um, there is a good re that there is a good reason to ha find interest and maybe challenge yourself to doing the installation process yourself. Um, however, if you are frustrated or are a very detail oriented person. Um, who just doesn't want or isn't interested in having something that is not perfect, um, you might have a more difficult time going uh, the DIY route when it comes to installation. So this is uh, actually that car that's outside getting wrapped at its current wrap. It was done in uh, May, I believe. Right, like this it's is around May. May. <laughs> so, you, first of all, you just tape it to the car. And you make sure, okay, this is the right size. It's not going, like, the character's head isn't going to end up on the window. And if you're not showing the window, um, you make sure that, like, uh, in his case, you can see that it's got the arch over the front fender. He had to make sure that lines up and stuff. So, you, first you tape it there. Then the next one, which is the top, uh, top, right. top right corner, uh, you can see he's actually started on the wheel well. Uh, you can see it's tucked in on there. It's still covering the window in the, in the back because he's, uh, he's trimmed it back, but it hasn't actually fully cut it yet. And the very bottom one is uh, almost done, where it's, uh, you, he's tucked in all sides and put, uh, put the back marker out. He's cut the back taillight out. He's cut the handles out. And all the wheel wells are tucked in. Uh, but he still hasn't finished and completely finished installing the, the uh, hardware at that point. But that was the final picture and his process. The biggest takeaway and something that you should keep an eye on, especially in the design phase, is see where the body lines and um, uh, body lines meet the actual graphics itself. You wouldn't believe how many people have installed wraps and didn't find out until they received it and found out that the person's eyes were on the handles of the car. <laughs> Unless you want that, I mean that's pretty funny. <laughs> if, if that's your intent, then go go for it. But so this is the big one. <laughs> How much does it cost? Because it varies, and that's the problem. Is it it can vary by a lot. Um, our like I said, mine was like five hundred dollars because I went with all custom. Uh, I know people who got like a friend to do it for forty bucks. Uh, and then, I mean, if you're stealing it, it's free. But uh, we're, we're saying that we'll, we're, we'll pretend we're ethical here, and we'll say that you go from like 100 to uh, this guy. Uh, <laughs> he, he went a little overboard. With his. Um, next up is the design, where you're actually laying out the vehicle. That can run you like 500 to 1,500 dollars. Uh, I know that the shop I went with was like 500, all said and done. Uh, mine was on the low end because I got a full package deal. We'll go over that later. Um, but they can, like, there's some people who charge a bunch and that's all they do. Um, the printing is the most expensive part. Uh, uh, this is assuming a full wrap. Um, all of this detail assumes yeah. that you're wrapping the entire car. The entire vehicle. So the primary cr cost driver is the square footage of material printed. So if you're doing, like, a hood, 
you can probably get a full custom design from start to finish to about like 300 to 500 dollars if you're printing out like a full wrap and multiple layers this is going to go into five digits right like it's 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 one of those things that's highly dependent on exactly what you want. And, but your average one, I would say your average is roughly around 3,000 to 4,000. And unless you're going really fancy, at which point then that's when you start to get to the crazy numbers. So, uh, for a full wrap, so again, if, you're, if you want a hood or you just want the size, you can get it to like uh, those triple digits. I, I personally found out and I had no idea uh, I learned that those chrome wraps that they do in all those wrap videos um, are expensive, really expensive. They're like, <laughs> um, the average cost material alone is about four times more than the most expensive counterpart. And the thing and the reason why a ton of wrap shops just straight swear it off is because you get one shot at it. Once it deforms, if it doesn't work, you have to pitch it. And for material that costs four times as much, it quickly adds up. And this is just a, basically a summary of those past things. Like, if, if you're one of DIY, oh, well, can, can you draw? Uh, uh, do you know uh, how to use the, the Adobe suite of tools, uh, Illustrator and such? Um, do you have a large format vinyl printer? And if so, why do you not already know this? And, uh, <laughs> if, you, if, you ra if you've already wrapped your car in vinyl or if you're want the, to get the experience or if you're uh, already have the experience like these are some a little bit niche skill sets it's not like everyone's like oh yeah I just changed my car to green yesterday um experience is expensive and I, I mentioned that with uh, the, the learning how to apply yourself um, your own rap um, but it can you know be also beneficial this you know it's a niche um, set of skills and it is something that is marketable if you are looking for some sort of opportunity in that facet. It's just that it, you know, it's expensive. So we'll talk a little bit about my car, but I'll leave this for, we can talk about it later too, so that we uh, have time to talk a little bit more about the other ones. Um, for me personally, um, I learned a little bit of Japanese to get the artwork done. Um, Toho is an intellectual property that is very popular in Japan, but is known everywhere else on the planet as the world's largest niche. Um, I wanted to choose something that was um, organic um, domestically, uh, with that intent um, and I worked with a couple of artists um, and whether it be language barrier or just their availability um, I had to use two different artists for my project ultimately but um and then I've had multiple designers as well um, I think that a lot a lot of people dismiss the idea that you know, I'm, I'm interested in the studio and I have to work with them. But, you know, it's a handshake that goes both ways. You need to kind of uh, get a little bit of a feeler. And it was a mis huge mistake on my part that I would recommend you guys learn from because I wasted a lot of time on it, which is find a designer who has a similar thought and uh, process flow that you have. Um, as the manager of your own project, it's very important that you get your own creative input and have a good idea of the steps and uh, process that you want to see this done. It's all done very differently to a certain degree individualistically, and you need to find someone who can, can meet the, the process that you do. Then I drove my car to California and back to get it done. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> Of the second version of the Raptor 
very slightly different, but um, I just, since I went with the package deal, I also had to like drive my car down to Houston, Texas to get it wrapped um, because that's where their in-house wrap shop was. They did offer to send it to me and have me shop around for a shop up here, and I was like, nah, all, you guys know what you're doing. And they did, they did a good job, so it's just a matter of, I had to drive down to Texas. Um, so someone asked about maintenance upkeep earlier, and that's a great question. Um, the thing about uh, maintenance uh, that a lot of people think of, especially when you look online, you're going to see a huge skew of people asking specifically about UV and sun exposure. And that's because there are f what I would like to call more flourishing uh, Itasha communities, specifically in California and Texas. There are huge, huge hubs there, and the biggest concern for them there is uh, why it's not raining and why is there so much sun. So... Um, and that's a good concern. Um, with a lot of vinyl, um, sun exposure is one of the biggest um, concerns um, for them. The uh, UV will do damage over time if not uh, mitigated in some fashion. Um, when uh, in their situation, a lot of people will use uh, vehicle uh, covers, uh, a carport, or ideally a garage, but not always available. It also etched his clear coat. <laughs> Cover your vehicles. So, um, also other environmental factors. Uh, try not to park under trees. Uh, if you have a car that you care about a lot, this shouldn't come as a surprise. Uh, tree sap, wildlife, birds, they're all concerns. Um, so, uh, just same process applies. Um, when it comes to parking and parking garages... Um, but also be comfortable with people just parking next to you anyways. Mm. That just happens. Um, and I, I always parked my car far away and no one cared to park next to a silver Tesla. But then if it was an anime bunny Tesla, oh, <laughs> so be, uh, be, be aware that people will park next to you more frequently and be comfortable with people living in your blind spot on highways. That happens a lot. Um, in terms of cleaning, um, if you're familiar with a two-bucket method wash, this, uh, that's going to be your bread and butter. If you're not familiar with it, you should learn it. Google it. it Google it. It's awesome. Uh, it's a good way to, to be able to wash a car in a detailed uh, fashion. Regardless if it's wrapped or not, um, you can keep your paint in the best quality as well as protecting the uh, clear coat. The big material to look out for uh, for vinyl is uh, Carnauba wax. It's ca often seen, it's a, an additive that gives your car a little bit of an extra shine. Um, it's seen in a lot of mid-tier car washing products um, because of the way it looks on paint uh, after you wash a car. It looks good. Um, and it destroys vinyl, so don't use it. Finally, salt. Um, it... So, well, it's, it's again, it's, um, it, I, I, t I often tell people, if you have a vehicle you care about, a lot of maintenance and upkeep is stuff that you're already doing. Um, a lot of people who drive in the winter uh, who care about their vehicles will try to find a way, some way, somehow, to get that salt off their vehicle in a reasonable amount of time. Owning a Tasha, same rules apply if you care about maintaining the uh, quality of this wrap over time. So um, I guess going to shows, um, this guy's done it a little bit longer, so I'll let him talk about it a little bit. All right, so going to shows is a mixed bag. Like, there's – the best parts of it are when you're – when you get to see, like, someone's eyes and when they like, oh, I can't believe this is a real car. Because uh, there's a lot of people like, oh, these are, like, show cars someone pushed in. Like, these don't have motors. And I'm like, no, these are da everyone's daily drivers. Like, these are cars people drive on a regular basis. 
like the light on their faces when you tell them like, oh, here's how to do it. It's not hard. It's just a matter of like doing, uh, saying you find something you like, you click with, and you, you want to put on there. Um, but there's also a little bit of bad because there are people who are now going to just touch your car. There's a lot of people in the uh, who come to conventions who, because conventions are held in cities, who just don't do cars. They don't do car culture. So they'll touch your cars. They'll sit on them. They'll like pick at the edges of the wrap. Um, I've had a little kid who actually just like ran up, body slammed my car, and left a giant scar on it. Like uh, I had someone at uh, Anime NYC. 2021, who set their merch on my car like a table, and then it was just batting it back and forth, and I had massive scratches on the back of my trunk for a while uh, until it got it replaced. And it's just like, well, what were you thinking? Oh, I wasn't. <laughs> so you have to you have to watch your car a little bit. Usually, if you're doing it with a group, you have a bunch of people. Uh, sometimes they'll give you like the little uh, baller uh, stanchions to cover, go around, but you can't count on that. You basically have to assume that people are going to walk up with their sharp swords that they they brought at a cosplay and they're just going to drag them along the side of your car i had there you, you laugh but there there's a guy who had just bare paint on it for most of his car and had uh, it was like a resident evil wrap and he just had the rpd logo on his hood and that's why he was qualified for the, the convention and someone must have just with a metal sword or just like the the buckle on like a pair of jeans or the the brad just straight up it's just scratched straight down the side of the car and you have uh, something that might happen if you're doing shows. Uh, I know I'm making it sound really bad, but uh, there, for the most part, it's great. People love to see the cars. It's just every time you get to talk to people, people just love seeing them. Uh, I'm I still, I'm still doing it after four years. Like it's not like uh, like even with all the problems I've had over the years, I'm still doing it because I still think it's worth uh, like showing people and getting other people excited about it. The vast majority of time, you will not have any major issue, but you have to keep in mind that it's a high volume event of people who are not inherently car enthusiasts. Keep, keep in mind that the way that they usually do it, it's like if we, uh, you usually put the cars near uh, either the artist alley or um, like the equivalent of the marketplace. So, like if we had uh, where the uh, indie game area is right off the marketplace. Uh, it, like you have to go through there to go to the exit and we just park your cars in the middle of that so all the people who are just coming from the marketplace you just walk past or through the car air with the cars like so you can't exactly say well just just go around there's a ton of, there's literally hundreds of people going through every hour so you have to it's not like oh we can just make sure no one gets near the cars no it's at that point you're screaming at people to get off the cars constantly and that's not fun so moving away from why we hate people let's talk about a couple of the perks about doing this um so um it's a really good place to um kind of show um your um personal um passion for some sort of topic um towards a lot of people who understand or appreciate the the effort that you put into it and that's something very special and something that a lot of people really really like about displaying their cars um, not only for the personal enjoyment, but also just, um, you know, the, the sharing this, this journey with people who, who understand where they're coming from, right? Um, the, the other perks are that oftentimes these shows will comp your past, not necessarily your housing, but at least your past. Um, and um, sometimes if you're lucky, you'll even find people who cosplay characters from the same IP, and that can always be a ton of fun. So this is all not strictly legal. It's the same way that fan art isn't really legal. It's just that generally companies don't think it's worth their time to go after your average person selling their, uh, their merch with Mario's face on it at a convention. Usually it's bad publicity. Um, that said, uh, it is technically illegal and they would win the court case in most, uh, you would assume. Um, they also have a bit more financial resources than you probably. Depending, uh, the, you, uh, de depending again. This is depending on the way you acquired art. If it's fan art, then you can then it's derivative and it's a lot more legal gray area. But if you take an official asset and vectorize it, technically plagiarism. Uh, it never hurts to ask the companies. I asked the company I have on mine, just, and they said, "Go for it. Anything you find online, just whatever. Just don't use our logo, like the logo, so we don't. Uh, it doesn't look like we sponsored you." And I'm like, "Okay." 
Um, most people will just say, sure, well, we can't stop you, and just like, uh, just don't do anything stupid with it. Um, that said, there uh, at NAMYC uh, 2023, which was November, Toei, who owns Sailor Moon, kicked out the Sailor Moon car because they did not like the fact that there was a Sailor Moon car that was not under, that they did not approve of. Uh, that this is a risk, but it, that is the only time I've ever had that happen. So. Toei is notorious for hating you. Yeah. Um, also, this, hap this was a typo on my part. It w actually happened in 2022, so I apologize. Uh, yes, because they didn't have a Natasha pan um, showing in 2023 specifically because of that event. NSFW raps. Um, uh, I was going to say, yeah, we, I, I, if you can, okay, it's like, it's personal expression, but like, you're also, uh, children, children are in public as well, and it's like, do you really want to have to explain to someone, think of the children, goes like, okay, I'm wearing you up for public disturbance, like, you don't really have a recourse at that point, I, there are some people who've done it, most of them got taken off within like two or three months because they just didn't want to deal with the hassle. Anymore. They weren't rich enough to afford the tickets. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> um, and there are a few corporate Natasha as pictured there. That's the Miku GT car. It's an actual race car sponsored by uh, uh, the Hatsini Miku. Krypton Future Media. What's on them? Uh, they actually sponsor the GT car. So there's an official Natasha. There's a few that uh, from the people down in Texas I know who uh, the, some of the anime companies reached out to It's very, very unlikely that you'll do it. Usually, uh, you have very special corporate connections to make that happen. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of NSFW, uh, from my search, it was about 50% of the chance doing an NSFW was just a clear violation of public indecency laws. Um, so just don't, unless you can afford it and you really just don't care about other people, I can't stop you. This is, you, you can do whatever you like, but... Um, you know, play, play, play games. <laughs> you, you, you. Anyways, um, I was supposed to get through this a lot quicker, but I enjoy talking to people who don't ask too many questions. So, um, this is a QR code to uh, the largest Natasha Discord on the planet that I know of. Um, and there's a ton of people from various different plan uh, places. So, we have people from Germany, we have people from Finland, we have people from Italy, plenty of places all over the country, Canada, you name it, there might be a person from there. One of those cars from the examples we showed earlier was actually from Germany. Uh, we, it was the one in the center, but like we had, I, we asked just everyone to say, hey, wait, wait, who wants to add their car? And they got like a motorcycle, a couple planes, so, it, yeah. But um, this is, again, this is just a primer. It's a good place to get yourself started. Um, it's such an individual and unique thing for everyone. It's kind of everyone's own short journey or long journey um, into in, to creating something that you know you want to do for yourself. Um, it's a creative outlet. It's a ton of fun. Um, the people, um, vast majority of them, are just super enthusiastic about something and you know have fun doing something they can call their own. Um, but yeah, please uh, feel free to join. Um, we have uh, plenty of super active members. If you want a ribbon, come get one. <laughs> yeah, well, we also made some ribbons. Uh, but anyways, we'll open up to uh, questions. So please, uh, we have time, but I also think that there's not a panel after us, so we can keep doing questions until they kick us out. Yeah.